In the past few videos, we have been going over the theory and examples to how to solve linear systems of equations using Gauss elimination. In this video, we are going to be walking through how to implement the Gauss or Gaussian elimination method into your Python codes. Let's just go through a quick reminder of what Gauss elimination is and how it works before we begin going through the code side. Gauss elimination is the process of transforming a square system of linear equations into one of our special matrices, specifically an upper triangular matrix, meaning we take our square linear system of equations and then we perform Gauss elimination on it, and that allows us to easily solve the matrix. Briefly, this process is started by transforming our matrix into an augmented matrix. Then we sequentially go row by row and reduce to zero all the elements below our main diagonal. This is accomplished using the following scaling factor formula, which is demonstrated in our Gauss elimination example videos, for which I will leave a link in the description down below. Then, once our matrix is in the upper triangular configuration, we perform what is called a backward substitution, which means we begin at the bottom of our matrix and solve for our unknown variables row by row moving up our upper triangular matrix. Now that we have a broad understanding of how Gaussian elimination works, let's get into coding Gauss elimination in Python. The first thing we need to do is import the NumPy library. We're going to use the NumPy library as it allows us to work with matrices within Python much easier. The IDE I'm using here, or integrated development environment, is called PyCharm. And to import NumPy into PyCharm, I'm going to do it in the following manner. We will click on our interpreter in the bottom right corner of our screen. Click on Interpreter Settings. This will bring you to the following Package Manager screen. Here you can find this small white plus button and click that. We're going to search for the NumPy library and then click Install Package. It is very important during this stage that you install NumPy to the correct interpreter, or else Python will not recognize the library when you try to run your code later in this video. Now that all of our packages that we need are installed correctly, let's begin coding our Gauss elimination. I'm going to define this as a function such that it can be called with any two acceptable functions. The two function parameters that we need our users to give will be an A matrix, which is our linear systems coefficients, and a B or our constant matrix. Next, I'm going to add some contingencies so that our user can know if they enter something incorrectly as opposed to just guessing. I'm just going to break this up into two parts. The first, we'll check if our A matrix is entered correctly. In the second part, we'll ensure that our B matrix works with our A matrix and also that it is sized correctly. Our first contingency will use the shape attribute, which will allow us to get the row and column dimensions of our arrays. So we'll first check if our A matrix that we are given is a square, as it should be. If it is not, we will return an error to our user and let them know that they made a mistake. And as this will cause problems in the near future, we're just going to put a return here. This will tell Python to return to the portion of code where this Gauss elimination function was called, as we don't want Python to continue the algorithm if our matrices are incorrectly sized. Additionally, we need to ensure that our constant vector is only a single column. You can read this line as if our B matrix has more than one column, we return, or if its number of rows do not equal our A matrix's number of rows, we also return. In our 2D matrices, Think of zero here and our shape attribute as a row and a one as a column. I'm just going to head and enter a few matrices here to demonstrate that only a proper matrix shape proceeds through to our temporary print statement here.
Moving forward, let's add a few lines to initialize some necessary variables. Firstly, we are going to take the length of our B matrix, which is the same as the column shape attribute we used earlier. Let's add in a variable that is less than one for our length, and I am going to add in a couple iteration variables that we will use soon. Then I will just initialize our solution vector, our x vector, using our zeros function of size n rows, and one column. Lastly, I'm just going to make a string variable that we will call later in our function that will just be used for some print statements. Next, let's just complete the first step of Gauss elimination, which is creating our augmented matrix. I'm going to do this through creating a new matrix that concatenates, or adds, our B matrix onto our A matrix. And creates a new matrix called augmented matrix. This will be done through NumPy's concatenate function. So we call our two matrices and then tell it that we want to add the B matrix in the column direction, hence axis one, to our A matrix. Lastly, I'm just going to make this matrix a float data type as an integer only matrix could cause some inaccuracy calculations due to truncation error. I'm also going to add these two print statements here to show our user our beginning augmented matrix and that shows that we are now beginning to solve the matrix using Gauss elimination. And although a bit unnecessary, I like visualizing my code like this and if you're like me, it allows for a more proper understanding of the code and helps us to identify if there are any errors occurring. Our Gauss elimination will be completed under this while loop. We say that while i, which is an iterating variable, is less than n, our number of rows, we run the code within the while loop. Firstly, if you have a zero on our main diagonal, we are going to run into issues with our scaling factor formula. Therefore, let's add a print error in return like we did previously. In a future video, I will make a Gauss elimination function that also actively does partial pivoting. When complete, I will add that video to the description down below. So check there if you're looking to add partial pivoting to your Gauss elimination function. However, for now, assuming we have no zeros on the diagonals, let's begin going row by row and systematically convert all of our elements below the main diagonal to zero. So this if statement is saying, while our iterating variable j, which is currently i plus one, up to our number of rows, n, complete the row by row reductions. Then we need to increase our iteration counter, i. And then we are done the Gauss elimination row augmentation. So at this point, it would be logical to test our system using some matrices. So let's do that now. And as you can see, we reduce our column one row by row first, and then we move on to the next column, but moving down our main diagonal with each increase of i. Our final step of Gauss elimination is we need to complete backward substitution, starting with our last row, of our augmented matrix and working our way up. We begin by initializing our backward substitution by solving for our first x value. So we only need to divide our bottom rightmost element, so m rows and n columns, since our augmented matrix is always going to be one column longer, by our xm value at the bottom of our matrix. This solves for the bottom value of our x matrix. Lastly, let's begin the backward substitution algorithm, which works by beginning at our second last row, since we have just previously solved the bottom row. This range function will begin at n minus two, so our second last row, and move up our rows by taking minus one steps, meaning that we are climbing up our matrix with each iteration, up to minus one, as the range does not include to the end step. 
So a zero here will ignore our first or our top row. So you need minus one as your end step. Lastly, this line here will go through and complete all the relevant element by element algebra and add it to our x vector matrix. Lastly, let's display the results to our user. To do so, I'm going to do it in a for loop like so, as I think it looks nice. I will save for temporary variable answer within a range of n, and in this first curly brackets, simply count up. And in the second one, calls the appropriate x value from our x vector variable. I will again just run a couple example matrices to prove that the Gauss illumination is now working within Python. I hope that this video helped your understanding of how to implement Gauss elimination in Python. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe, and consider checking out our YouTube memberships by clicking that join button down below. However, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns about the information I provided in this video, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to address your concerns.